Hey everybody, it's Hayden here from Top Dog. It's day eight of Top Dog Tober. I can't believe we're already here. It's going so fast. I want to know how many of you have watched every single video so far. If you have, go down to the comments right now and type something. Say, hey Hayden, I've watched every single video so far. Also, Dylan smells. Yeah, get him. Go on, pause the video. Do that for me. Anyway, before I move on, you know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to say. I've got to mention our sponsor, which is ourselves, for our 11 Plus Preparation Resources, which you can find on our website. Every single week, we release a premium video for English, maths, verbal reasoning, and nonverbal reasoning, and you can even download a little independent task that goes with every single lesson for you to practice just that bit more. And if that's not enough, then you can watch a walkthrough video of those tasks as well to help you further your knowledge. Now, if you use the discount code VOTE HAYDEN, you will get 15% off when you buy the one-off price for the whole year. That means, by the way, across the year, you will have 52 weeks worth of resources, four videos every single week. Do the maths, that's 208 video lessons that you'll get across the year for that discounted price. Pretty awesome. So check out the pinned comment down below for a link to that on our website. Now, guys, oh man, Dylan had a tough one yesterday. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. You know, he might be a bit smelly, but he did do a nasty one. So... This question right here, I'm going to show you the answer and we'll talk through it. Um, we're looking for shape changes here. So the answer was D. Now, I've tried to really highlight here on the screen for you why that is. If I go back one stage, what I recommend doing is drawing it in. So when you see that bit there for X, I would have drawn that in and thinking about taking it away. This bit here with Y, I would have matched it up and taken it away. And you'd be left with that piece there in the center. And once you can see that and shade it in, all you have to do is look for it in the answers. But it's even harder because it's been rotated. But anyway, I'll leave that one with you. Well done if you managed to get that right. Definitely one of the hardest types of nonverbal reasoning. So today, I just want to clarify something because we've been using this language a lot in our videos, but let's make it really clear. We've got a nice acronym here called SCANS to help you remember the types of things to look for when solving nonverbal reasoning questions. Because realistically, they're all kind of the same in terms of features are usually changing in some sort of way, right? That's kind of what nonverbal reasoning is. And there's only so many things that can change. So we've written them all down for you. Here are the five main categories of things that can change. It's the shape, for example, and this breaks it down further. You can pause it if you want. I won't read them all out. Are the shapes all the same? Have they overlapped? Are they not overlapping? Do they have any lines of symmetry? Have they moved somehow? Have they been rotated? Has the border changed, right? That kind of stuff. That's the main thing. Then you've got these other ones as well, like have you considered the color when you're looking for changes? What about the angles inside of the shape? Perhaps the angles are, are different. Maybe you've got a regular shape or an irregular shape based on the angles. Maybe there's right angles in one, but not in the other one, you know? Those kind of things matter sometimes. Number is really important. Sometimes it's about counting the number of things in relation to other things. Maybe in every figure, there has to be four dots and four lines. And that was really important to solving the question. And finally, the size as well. So if you can learn scans, shape, color, angle, number, and size, then you've always got it in the back of your mind. You're always looking for these things. You'll probably find that you solve the questions a bit quicker. So I'm going to try and use scans today as I go through these vertical code questions. One of my favorite types of nonverbal reasoning, because they look horrendous at the first, at first sight, if you've never seen this before. But actually, they're quite simple to solve, very logical. So here's what we've got to do. We've got a figure here on the right. It doesn't have a code, and we've just got to work out what its code is based on the information on the left. And that's what you get told in the test. What's really happening is you've got three different figures and a code representing each one that's broken up into either two, sometimes three letters. And each letter is going to represent something about that figure. And the way to figure out what those letters represent is by comparing them across the different ones, all right? For example, let's just take the first letter of each one first. Now, because we have two S's and a T, what that means is the S, which is representing something in the figure, is the same in the top figure and the bottom one, but the T is representing something different. Now, I think at first glance, it's quite obvious. You can probably see that the S must be representing the top left um, rectangle being filled in as black, whereas T represents it being filled in with white. So what we do is once we've worked out what that first letter represents, which is the shading of the top left uh, rectangle, we go over to our new figure before we start looking at the second letter, and we think, right, what's our first letter going to be? It's filled in black in the top left, which we decided was represented by the letter S. We can even use deduction if we want to, to remove answers that don't begin with S, okay? Sometimes that can be really helpful because it might leave you with just one or two answers to, to guess from if you're really stuck. 
Onto the second letters, because we've done the first letter now, we're looking again for similarities and differences. F, G, H. Now, a lot of children panic. They're like, oh no, there's, there's no ones that are similar. We can't work out what they mean. Well, you still can, because what this means is that every single figure has something different, a feature that's different across all three. So in this case, there's only one other feature really we can look at, which is the shape in the bottom right. We've got a triangle, circle, and a square being represented by F, G, and H. So we go over to our figure on the right, and we look, we've got a circle down here, and we just remind ourselves what was being represented for a circle. It was a G. So we can fill in our second letter as G, and we've completed our answer. Not too bad, right? So on to the next question. This time you'll notice, look, not only do we have four figures now, when we had three before, we've also got three letters per one. So a little bit more thinking might be required for this, but I actually personally think it gets easier the more you add, because there's just more stuff to compare, right? It's easier to, to work out what it is based on the other ones. So I'm gonna get you to pause the video and have a go. I want you to work one letter at a time, work out what the first letter must represent by comparing ones that are the same, working out what it must represent, and work your way across to find the three letter code for this figure. Have a go. Right, well done for having a go. Let's check this out now. So A and A are the same in this first row, and then we've got B, the first column, sorry, and then we've got B and C, which are different. So that means there is something similar about the top and the bottom one that's different for B and different again for C, okay? And we can tell by looking that it's this shape right here. So if A represents it being a little diamond shape, C represents it being a square, and B represents a circle. Ours is a square, so we're gonna write C in for our first uh, letter of the code. Guys, look what that does. That's pretty cool, right? Something even cooler is about to happen in a minute. I wonder if you can see it by from using deduction. So let's work out the second letter. G, H, I, J. Wow, they're all different. So G, H, I, J, there must be something different about all of these figures. Now I'm gonna rub out my workings here just to make it really obvious. Now, I'm looking at the left. I don't think it's anything to do with the left because we've got things in common with those little extra lines there. But on the right-hand side of the shape, I notice that this one's curved, this one's pointed, this one's flat, and this one's like the, like the edge of a, an octagon or something like that, okay? So it's different in all of them. So the second letter must represent what the right-hand side edge looks like. Ours has a point which matches with H. So we're gonna put H as our second letter and move on. Now, something cool happens here. Look at the answers. It's not that one. There's only one left. The answer must be C. That happens sometimes in the test. You can save time, all right, by using deduction. We don't need to work out the last letter, but for the sake of this video, let's do it because it's kind of cool because we get two pairs. This happens sometimes. We've got two O's and two P's, and that simply means the two of O are the same for, in regards to a feature, and that same feature is different but the same in the two P's. So it's different to the O's, but the two P's will also be the same. And you can see it right here on the kind of left-hand side of the shape. The two P's are representing just one single line at the edge, and the two O's are representing a double line on the edge. Ours has a double line, which matches with the O. Again, confirming our answer is C-H-O. So that is it. I wanna summarize it too, then you're gonna have a go, because this one is for you guys to do at home. Break it down, one, let, one column of letters at a time, look for similarities and differences, find the feature that they represent, and build the code slowly, one letter at a time, using deduction for your figure on the right. And that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget you can check out the community tab on our YouTube page to see how me and Dylan are doing in our little competition, who's going to be closer to the forfeit when it comes to it at the end of October. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.